So we've had a chance to take a look at the ultrasonic sensor. Now we're going to look at a similar sensor that does a very similar thing. The IR sensors on the bottom of the robot function the same way as the ultrasonic. But instead of sending an ultrasonic frequency out, the IR sensor is sending a pulse of infrared light that we can't see and seeing if it bounces back. Now these sensors can be used to tell the difference between black objects and other colors. Um, because colors other than black will reflect infrared where black absorbs it. Um, they can also be used as a distance sensor. So you can tune them in so you could have something turn on at a given distance. Nowhere near as accurate as the ultrasonic sensor, but they can work in that capacity. For the case of our robot, we're going to be taking a look at using it as a light sensor. So first thing, same as we did with the ultrasonic, open up a new file for testing and troubleshooting. So I'm going to go new, open up my new document, and I'll start putting in some code. Now, so again, we've got several integers that we need to set up. So I've got integer, sensor right, and that's plugged in A3 if this is the standard robot, but always check make sure that you've got the right ports integer sensor left and that is going to be in A2 now we're going to set up two other values these this is the first time we've really looked at analog um, so we're going to make a value for right and a value for left that we can assign a different number to later. Um, so we'll go integer right value and we'll make that equal to zero and integer left value and we'll make that equal to zero as well. So those are all the integers that we're going to need. Now this zero isn't referring to a pin on the Arduino, it's just saying right value currently has a value of zero. Left value currently has a value of zero. So let's get into the setup. Now, one of the things with Arduino is that if we're using analog pins, we don't need to declare them as an input or an output. By default, they're all inputs. So the only thing that we need to do here is make our serial begin, like we did before in the ultrasonic code so we could read what we're seeing. So serial dot begin and we'll use the same baud rate that we did before. You could use different baud rates. Really doesn't matter until we get into the ultra or into the Bluetooth stuff. So serial begin, there's our baud rate and we'll start writing a simple code to read these sensors. Delete that. So I'm going to say that write value equals analog read sensor write, close it off. So what I'm doing is I'm reading sensor write using the analog read function and I'm assigning that value to write value. So from now on, write value is not going to equal zero. It's going to equal whatever sensor write is. Do the same with the other one. Left value equals analog read sensor left. And then left value now is always going to be what sensor left is reading. So pretty straightforward there. So we want to see what these values actually are. And like we did with the ultrasonic, we're going to use the serial print command. But I'm going to do it a little differently this time so you can see how versatile that command is. So I'm going to go serial dot print. I'm not doing my print line like I did last time. And I'm going to say sensor right equals space 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 
Yeah. Go like that. Sensor right equals semicolon. Oh, forgot to put my quotation here. I'm putting this in quotation, see how it turns color? That way it's going to print the text. It's not actually going to print anything to do with sensor right. Now let's print what sensor right is. So serial dot print. And this time we're going to go that right value, which is sensor right. So right value, like so. Missed that capital S in serial. Let's go back and fix that. We will go serial print again. Serial dot print. And this time I'm going to go space space just so I have some space in my command. Sensor left equals semicolon. So I've got sensor right equals right value. Sensor left now is going to equal the left value. So again, serial dot print. Now this time I am going to go print line so it moves to the next line when it's finished. And we will go left value. I'm going to just add a delay at the end so it makes it easier to read. And I should already have a closing bracket down there. So this basic little code will read the value from those sensors. So let's upload that to the board. Apparently I'm not plugged in. Okay, now I'm plugged in, so let's go to Tools. Make sure I've got my higher port number. And upload that to the board. Oh, got to save it. Okay, I've got right value. Oh, a little typo there. We'll fix that. And try again. So it's uploading to the board, and we'll be able to check in a second and see what those sensors are reading. Now, these sensors, if you look at them, have got a little potentiometer at the front that you can adjust with a screwdriver. You may have to do that to get them working properly. Uh, let's open our serial monitor and just see what's going on. Move this in so you can see it. So I can see sensor right and sensor left. If I take my robot now and I move it so sensor right is on a black line, you can see I'm not getting a or I'm getting a value of almost a thousand coming back. And if I check with sensor left, now I'm not getting that with sensor left, so I'm just going to take a screwdriver and gently adjust the potentiometer. There, so I adjusted the potentiometer on the front until I got the values that I wanted. So now I could write a code, so say if robot, if sensor right and less, left are less than 100, drive straight. If sensor right is greater than 100, turn left. If sensor left is greater than 100, turn right. And essentially, that'll be a line following robot. So what I want you to do is go ahead and merge this code with your original code and see if you can get it to be a line following robot.